Back in the 40s, Jeep came out with the Willys MB for World War II, and these things were put through the ringer. Nice air, bro. Then the CJ came out, which stands for Civilian Jeep, which was the first Jeep to sport this iconic body style. In 1987, the CJ was replaced by the YJ, the first autonomous driving Jeep. Just kidding. So you may ask the question, why should you buy a Jeep? Well, reason 127. If they install a retaining wall in front of your driveway, you won't be late for dinner. Plus, you can customize it however you want. It's named after a jean company. Again, just kidding. And there's a little thing called the Jeep Wave Protocol. And there's only two rules that 60% of the time, they're followed every time. So I think it's time for Trav and I to build, not buy, a Jeep Wrangler. Well, although we've been able to have a ton of fun in this 911, it is one incredible machine. It's taking quite the hit on our bank account after about a month of ownership. And so I thought it would be in our best interest to find another car. And when I say car, what I mean is actually a Jeep Wrangler, a 2001 four liter five speed. So let's go check this thing out. So I rolled up to this beautiful property, and at first glance, this Jeep looked like a winner. So I met Jack, the owner, who seemed like a super nice guy, and it looked like he was also selling a pretty honest Jeep. So as we started walking around the car, little red flags started to appear. For starters, this spare didn't match the other wheels. Coming around the front, he said that this winch here hadn't been working in a couple of years, and he really didn't even know why. It's probably gonna be a fun one for trash. And when I opened the hood, I saw there were scrapyard numbers on the valve cover, which then I learned that not only this radiator had been replaced, but also the cylinder head. Good news for us. Fun fact, this Jeep actually was imported from Canada, which means that it has the daylight running lights and the metric gauge cluster, which I learned that Jack had actually converted this cluster over to miles per hour, which I hope will help with resale value. So to see if this Jeep was the one, it was time to take it for a drive. Jeeps went into production in 1941 for our military. And what they built was a platform for the longest mass production four-wheel drive vehicle, and in turn, crafted a whole new car segment, the SUV. And since they did that, they've become the ultimate vehicle for the young, or young at heart, who want to epitomize an active lifestyle and arguably join the most active enthusiast forum for any car or truck. This rig here is the perfect blend of a vehicle that you can take to work during the week and then rip the top off, go down to the beach or up a mountain and just have the biggest blast of your life. And now that I've spent some time in this Jeep, there's a couple cosmetic and a few mechanical issues that I think Trav can figure out. But I think that we need to go see Jack and make him offer. So let's go. I got back from the road test and the Jeep seemed to drive really well. And the only caveat was the fact that he wanted to only include the hardtop at a full asking price. But the fact that the winch wasn't working, there were a few other issues and these tires were completely bald, I was able to negotiate $2,000 off of the asking price and get the hardtop. So for $5,000, we were able to get this whole Jeep with the hardtop back to the ideal garage and so now it's time to take that top off because everything's more fun topless and get this thing washed up so Trav can check it out. Brad bought us this Wrangler for a seemingly very reasonable $5,000. And besides some bald tires and a couple minor body issues, it seemed to be in pretty good shape. Now, these Jeeps are notorious for rust, specifically around the rear floorboard or trunk pan, as well as the floorboards and body seams right next to the front seats. So make sure you check both sides. Next, we'll have a look underneath the hood. Now these inline sixes are generally very reliable. So as long as we don't see any crazy aftermarket accessories or anything that's blatantly out of place, there isn't a ton to be concerned with under here. As always, inspect the brake fluid because it's so commonly missed. And take a close look at the battery for any signs of corrosion or damage. So rust 
and aftermarket accessories are the two most common things that plague this generation Jeep. So make sure you do a thorough inspection of any aftermarket devices you find. Next, we get our Jeep up in the air so that we can do a proper inspection of the suspension. These Jeeps often see off-road use, so it's not completely uncommon to have worn out suspension components. Closely inspect all four tires, because tires this size are not cheap, and clearly ours are going to need replacement. Continue your search for rust, specifically on the frame and any of the suspension connecting brackets. Take a close look at the transfer case for any signs of leakage, and closely inspect the brake lines for any signs of damage. I'm pleased to report that after my initial inspection, besides this winch not working, our Jeep's pretty mechanically sorted. So unlike some of our previous cars, this Jeep doesn't need so much mechanical repairs as it does some cosmetic enhancements to become an ideal car. This is gonna be a fun one. It's great news that Trav gave this Jeep a relatively clean bill of health, which means we can get some new wheels and tires, but also we have a budget for some cosmetic upgrades. Before you say a single word, Trav, let's get these wheels bolted up. They are. All right, Chad, so I know you're jealous that I brought all these parts back, but man, I got some cool 33 and a half by 12 and a half wheels and tires, which let's go out with the old and in with the new. So as you can see, these lights, they're pretty outdated. And to do any serious kind of off-roading in an early model Jeep Wrangler like this one, you're gonna need to upgrade the lights. We're gonna update these headlights and refresh this grill. Now simply replacing the headlights with factory units would be a pretty straightforward task, but we've opted to upgrade our headlights with some aftermarket units that may require a bit of customization. So to deal with this grill, we're gonna have to disconnect these cables that run through it that power the winch. Now our winch doesn't work, so I'm hoping that by removing this cover, we may uncover the problem with our winch itself. Just two four millimeter Allens holds the cover on, and taking a quick poke around, I discovered that at least one of the connectors had a sizable amount of corrosion in it. So as you can see here, there's actually quite a bit of corrosion built up on two of these pins, so we're gonna clean it up. I'm gonna plug this back in. Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll fix the winch. I use a special tool for cleaning electrical terminals. It's basically a tiny file and a little bit of my favorite electrical contact cleaner. Then, with everything plugged in, well, it appears that we fixed the winch. A working winch is certainly a huge win for us, but the previous installer ran all the wiring for it through the grill, so we have to disconnect it and get it out of the way for now. These headlamps are held in by just three fasteners on the back and three tiny screws around these chrome bezels on the front. Without too much effort, the bezels pop off and our headlights are out. So instead of spending a couple hundred dollars on a new core support, I was able to find this grill cover. Did you get that one? I was able to find this grill cover, which is gonna make the front look a lot more modern, and also some headlights to update the lighting. Before we can install our new aftermarket grill, we have to remove the old chrome surrounds, which should pull off easily. I have Brad start cleaning up the core support where the grill mounts as I start getting the headlights ready to go back in the Jeep. We'll be reusing the Jeep's factory headlamp brackets, so take the chrome rings off and swap the headlamps into the old brackets themselves. So before I let Trav get too carried away with this trim, I realized it wasn't gonna match the rest of the theme of the car, and so I gotta use my favorite product, Blasted It. Wait for the paint to dry, then reassemble the headlamp assemblies. It's time to reinstall. Take extra care when installing your headlights. You wanna make sure not to scratch the lenses or pinch any of the wiring. Now, lucky for us, these headlights are plug and play minus the halos. Our new headlights are installed and I think they look great. And since it was Brad's idea to install a cap over this grill. Dude, get out of here, man. You work too hard. I'm gonna install this. Hey, Trav, call me. Before you install this cap, make sure you hit this tape. 
with our adhesive tape ready to go and the core support cleaned up, our new grill fits perfectly. Using the new supplied hardware for the grill, installing it is quick and easy. And with just four quick bolts, two on the top and two in the headlamp bezels, the grill's done. With our new headlights and grill installed, it's time to figure out wiring up these halos and I'm gonna reroute the winch harness while I'm at it. Not only does rerouting the winch harness further clean up the front of our Jeep, but it also gets the wiring away from the radiator. We opted to add a little corrugated tubing to help protect the harness and also to clean up the front just that little bit more. Corrugated tubing can be a bit of a pain to work with, but the end result, I think, makes it worth it. We simply trim the tubing at the desired length with the razor and attach the entire thing to the harness using zip ties. To finish up the job, we spray all our connections with an anti-corrosive. This will help ensure the fact that our winch is going to work when we need it. With our winch wiring out of the way, it's time to tackle these halos. Both of these wires are actually power wires. One wire lights the halo up white, and the other one lights it up orange. Now we are choosing to splice our halo into the turn signal harness. Since we don't have a wiring diagram for the Jeep, a quick tip I have is simply power the circuit up and start attaching the halo wires to different pins in an attempt to reverse engineer the circuit. Once you identify which wire is which, mark the connector. I used a razor blade and made some hieroglyphs. With our connector marked, it's time to cut and strip the factory harness. Now on any automotive application, I prefer to use marine buck connectors. The reason for that is they actually have a little bit of sealant inside, so when you heat them up, not only do these act as heat shrink and collapse down around the wire, but also a small amount of sealant works its way to the edges to create a completely watertight connection. And with Brad behind the wheel, we need to make this Jeep as waterproof as possible. Using the correct gauge crimp connector, slide it onto one of the stripped wires and simply crimp it down. You'll notice that on most wire crimpers, there's a colored dot next to the part of the tool where you should be crimping that same colored connector. Twist the two ends of the appropriate wires together, add a small amount of heat shrink, and insert the two twisted wires into the other side of the crimp connector. Crimp it down, then use a little bit of heat to create a watertight seal. Now a heat gun is the preferred method, but sometimes you've gotta work with what you've got. After waiting for the crimp connector to cool down, slide the heat shrink over and use a little heat on that too. Do this for the other wire and repeat the process on the other side. Then finally, finish tidying up upstairs, stand back and admire your work. These new lights look spectacular. With our headlights installed and working, it's time to move on to our next lighting upgrade. We're gonna install an LED light bar. Installing a light bar on one of these Wranglers is actually a pretty straightforward task. You simply need to remove the fasteners from the existing windshield bracket and install your new light bar brackets over them. Now unfortunately, our kit didn't come with new fasteners, so we had to source our own. We decided the best way to route the wiring for our light bar would be to run it underneath the cowl. So step one to removing the cowl is removing the windshield wiper arms. You just need to slide the clip for the wiper arm down and the wiper arm should pull right off. Then remove the seven Phillips head fasteners holding the cowl on. Don't forget the two fasteners hidden underneath the hood seal. Take care when removing the cowl. It is metal and will easily scratch the hood. While the cowl's off, Take this opportunity to clean out any debris you find, specifically around the cowl drain. Install the bracket on the other side. We want to get everything installed before we tighten anything down, so just screw the fasteners in by hand. Then, with the help of a friend, install the light bar. We don't want to snug anything up just yet. We wanted to get our light bar wired in first. Now when Brad bought us this light bar, he also bought a wiring harness kit. So using the exact same wiring practices we employed on our headlights, we're going to wire our new harness kit to the light bar itself. Being very careful not to actually pinch any of our new wires, we were able to run our harness underneath the light bar bracket. And with that portion of the harness installed, it's time to tighten down the light bar brackets themselves. With our brackets tight, we adjust the light bar and snug it down. Now you'll need to choose a location for the light bar relay. We found that this little body post that's already being used to hold part of the body harness worked perfectly. 
Now there are several ways you can run your light bar to power, but the kit we got with came with these little eyelets. So we're just gonna simply attach these eyelets to the battery terminals. Install your light bar eyelets to your battery terminals. Take this opportunity to clean up any corrosion if there is any. Also, our harness kit came with an extra connector that we're just gonna seal up with some dielectric grease. With our harness hooked up and our relay mounted, it's time to choose a place for the switch. We decided the best place to put our switch would be on the driver's side speaker trim. We run the wiring for our switch through an existing body plug that's already carrying wires for the wiper motor. Just pull the plug out and feed the new wiring down. Then from the inside of the Jeep, pull the wires through. Now we're gonna need to modify our speaker trim for the switch. And sometimes the simplest solution is the most elegant one. So with the help of a drill bit, we made our switch a new home. Now our switch came with a nice rubber gasket already attached to it. So we didn't have to worry too much about making our incision look beautiful. Hook the switch up to the wiring and reinstall the speaker trim. Reinstall the cowl cover, put back all the screws you removed, and reinstall your wiper arms. Remove the plastic protective coating from the light bar and let it shine. Well, I think finally the front of this Jeep is looking pretty spectacular. I think we're about done up here. Not so fast. When we were putting in these headlights, we saw that this Jeep had been pre-wired for factory fog lights, so I sourced these Hellas, and we're gonna light up the world. Brad was able to find us the exact fog lights that belong on this Jeep. No wiring, splicing, or modifying required. Just bolt them on, tighten them down, plug and play. So now the front of the Jeep is done. Let's go take a look at the back. We were able to source some really cool taillights for the rear of this Jeep, which will upgrade it just like we did the front. And following the instructions, installing these taillights was a snap and they look killer. Now Brad did a fantastic job installing these taillights. There's just one problem though. These lights, they blink faster than his install. Luckily though, the problem is easily fixed by simply replacing the flasher relay with one that's designed to work with LEDs. To gain access to our flasher relay, we need to remove the two Phillips head screws holding our steering column trim together. Remove the screws, then remove the upper portion of the column cover. Now luckily, I happen to know where the flasher relay lives on this generation Jeep, but if you're having trouble finding yours, a quick tip I have for you is simply turn on the hazards and listen for the relay clicking. Out with the old and in with the new. Then, just simply reinstall the column trim. Pay extra close attention to the trim pieces that go around the steering column's stocks. Make sure they're fully seated and reinstall your screws. So now that we've tackled not only the front but the back of the Jeep, it's time to give the inside a little bit of attention. I feel like the easiest way to enhance the interior of this Jeep is to rhino line it. And since Trav isn't here, I'm gonna try to call a couple of buddies and see if I can get some help. And help was hard to find. I threw the gauntlet at my buddies. Beer, pizza, a free back massage. Nothing worked, so I had to do it myself. So the first step to this job was to remove all eight bolts and pull out both captain's chairs. Then do the same for the rear bench seat and pull out all the carpet. Then with a bucket of hot soapy water, soap down the entire floor. And scuff the paint with some 80 grit sandpaper to make it easy for the rhino liner to stick. We are almost ready to start rhino lining, but before we squirt on the product, there's one more step we need to take, and that is masking off everything we don't want rhino liner on. So, you need some blue painter's tape, and also, I don't know, like a bunch of old tax returns or newspaper or something. And look at that masking job. To apply a nice even layer, use this back and forth motion and hit everything that you scuffed with the 80 grit sandpaper. So we just finished our first coat, wait one hour between applications, and then it takes about five to seven days before you can actually get it wet. And it is a night and day difference. It looks awesome. Man, this thing turned out incredible. Yeah, no, definitely. And this is actually our maiden voyage. I just got a call from our buddy Ryan that got his old truck stuck up at Reader Pit out of all places. So 
having a capable Jeep like this, we might as well go up there and try to pull him out, huh? Yeah, hey, looking for him, man. We actually have a vehicle <laughs> that'll do it. I know. So Ryan had been sitting there for over two hours waiting for us, and we both got out of the Jeep, and Trav tried to get it unstuck. Which I couldn't. So we decided we'd have to tow. I got Trav on his knees because I didn't want to get dirty, and we yanked it out. With the truck unstuck, Ryan couldn't quit talking about this Jeep. And since I knew he was a Jeep guy, I thought it would be a great opportunity to show him around what we had done. And after running Ryan through the list of things that we were able to accomplish on this Jeep and really make it our own, he seemed pretty interested. And even though we were really looking forward to spending the next few weeks having a good time with this thing, Ryan made us an offer we couldn't refuse. Plus Trav, selling it to Ryan keeps the car in the ideal family. So since it was such an impromptu purchase that we sold it to our buddy, let's recap our 2001 Jeep Wrangler. Our initial investment was $5,000 but we immediately spent another two grand on a wheel and tire package. Oh yeah, and then we put those cool halo lights, light bar, and I was able to source some of those hella fog lights. Then we followed the front end up by fixing the winch and installing that updated grill. And that Rhino Liner turned out awesome. I would suggest it for everybody. Finally, we rounded it out with updated taillights for the rear. But honestly, what I think sealed the deal with Ryan was the I am the black Jeep of the family tire cover that I snuck on, he related. And after it was all said and done, we made over $4,000 on this Jeep Wrangler. But getting to watch the final sunset with our Jeep with one of our best friends, priceless. <laughs> Another common thing that goes wrong with these Jeeps is all the after... No. Rust and aftermarket accessories are the two most common things that plague these aftermarket... So unlike some of our previous cards... Cards. So instead of spending... <laughs> <laughs> so instead of spending hundreds of dollars to replace this core support, I was able to find this cover for the grill. <laughs> <laughs> so instead... The reason for that is they actually have a little bit of sealant inside, so when you heat them up and they have... With our headlights installed and working, it's time to move on to our next lighting upgrade. We're gonna install an LED light bar. <laughs> so instead of spending hundreds of dollars on a core support here, I was able to find this cover for the, the grill. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha